happening? Wayne is giving her today. We are on the move. Uh, we are leaving Coral Harbor. Super fun night last night. Uh, we went to Limeout and Skinny Lakes. And then we went to Jolly Dog. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. So it's kind of like a quick tour of the island, hit all the fast ones of the places you got to see there. And surprisingly enough, all of the food was amazing. It wasn't over touristy or anything like that. It really had good flavor. It was a nice change. So it was a fun night last night. And then this yuckiness rolled in and we've got a crazy storm coming our way and it's just rolly as all get out. So we are now heading to a new Anchorage in hopes that we can get rid of some of the swell because this isn't fun. Yep. Looks like we're going to get a boat wash. Yep. So it's not a very far trip around this side here. We're just putting along, making some water, going to get some free water. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's not too bad. We watched a couple small boats go through here. And man, I wouldn't want to be on anything tiny today. The, there's been a crazy offshore swell the last three days coming in here. And now we have these small systems rolling in. It's really whipping it up. but. We got a nice little cruise around and hopefully get to Lampshire and uh, do some snorkeling and hopefully it smooths out in that bay because the one we were in was really bucking. Lampshire Bay is made up of two bays, Little and Great Lampshire. Both bays truly deliver with opportunities to get away from it all, whether hanging out on the beach, taking a hike, or going for a great snorkel. I lucked out, these are some really sought after uh mooring spots here and just as we were pulling in we went to the first bay no no availability and we came in here didn't look like there was anything and then a guy radioed us and said hey we're getting ready to leave so we lucked out and got a spot you know there's only a handful of balls but even on a cloudy kind of disruptive stormy looking day look how pretty this water is this is really good snorkeling apparently here i think we're going to be good here We were just talking about how this uh, is a national park and it has that feel. There's lots of signage, there's restrooms and there's something to be said about that. It's, it's all maintained too. So it's kind of nice to be here and know that your dollars that you're paying for your mooring every night are going to something to maintain this. And it's, we met the guy last night, he came to the boat, the park uh, attendant, kind of gave us a lowdown what we can do, what we can't do. And, and uh, he was super friendly and nice. And they're volunteers, so they, he works five days a week. The um, uh, parks department covers the use of a ball for him and um, pays his gas, but he had an electric motor, so he kind of made that a joke that he's not really gained anything there. But it was nice to meet him, super nice guy, and uh, he kind of gave us the lowdown on where to check out. So that's what we're doing today, one of the short hikes here, and then we're going off to see if we can't find some lobster, because you can fish, lobster, conch, whelks, all of it, you can fish for here. So we're excited about hopefully getting some lobster. Um, did somebody say mojito? These estate ruins here on Little Lampshire Bay are said to be the remnants of both a lime juice and a rum still until about 1915. I guess you could say it was a one-stop shop for sundowners in the bay. Cheers!
the master always at work. <laughs> It's a rugged little trail. Yeah. Sweaty. <laughs> What you got there? A whelk. So you're allowed to hunt these on most of the shorelines. They are um, like snails and they're sea snails and uh, apparently they're very good. So we might try and collect a bunch and cook them up tonight. I was reading about them this morning. Apparently they're really, really tough. They can actually drill into oysters and they eat oysters. Seriously? Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, there's a really whole bunch cool of them in there. Yeah, there's lots. Yeah. Clean them all. I'll put you back for later. Come back and find you. Yeah. What's going on here? Good swimming. <laughs> That's a lot of clothes you got on there. Yeah, it's getting hot really fast. We gotta get in the water. It's a little cooler here than we're used to down in Grenada. We've become major wimps when it comes to the water temperature. We jumped in yesterday. We got one lap around the boat and then had to get back in again because it was so cold. So it's wet seeds today, so we can go for a snorkel and have a little bit more fun in the water. Let's go. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, it's like 1200 degrees right now. <laughs> we have to get in the water. Have you ever tried to put on a wetsuit when you're super sweaty? It's like next to impossible. <laughs> Ugh. Big guy. Wow. I was not expecting to see a goat. This is so super cool. <laughs> oh my god. So cool. Watch the boat. This is some of the best snorkeling we've had in this beautiful crystal clear Caribbean water. There's lots of undersea outcroppings and caverns, incredible coral reefs, beautiful sea turtles, eagle rays, and a plethora of tropical fish.
After an epic underwater overload, it was time to put some clothes on and explore the vast green mountains around us. Lambshire Bay Trail runs eastward along the island towards Reef Bay Trail. We anticipated a two mile walk in the woods. That ended up being a six mile round trip, complete with steep elevation gains and intense heat. Fortunately, we were well prepared for this time. We had appropriate footwear, hats, sunscreen, and a picnic. What an awesome way to spend the morning in this lush green jungle, exploring fantastic ruins from the history of the land and finding some pretty interesting vegetation. We had so much fun snorkeling yesterday, but we're gonna try and take in some more of what this park has to offer. So there's about a two mile plus walk from here um, where you get to some petroglyphs that are dated somewhere between 800 and 1200 AD. So. We thought that'd be super cool to go check that out. There's also uh, the ruins from an old sugar mill. So we're going to go on a nice little hike through the trees today. It's kind of breezy. It's cool still, which is nice. This is a first. We're wearing actual proper footwear <laughs> and we're not starting at one o'clock in the afternoon when the sun's at its hottest, right? It's nine. It's going to be a lovely day today. So this is so out of our normal wheelhouse. We'll see how it goes. It could totally go sideways because we're doing something completely different. Who knows? Yep, we're crazy like that, but hopefully we get back in time. We want to go get some whelks and try those tonight. And if we have time, we're going to try and squeeze in another um, snorkel because it's really epic here. It's, it's so clear. Probably like, I don't know, like a visibility of 60, 70 feet. Yeah. And we were talking to a guy here and he said regularly it's over 100. So I would love to see what that's like. But it's, it's a unique looking uh, waterscape, landscape under the water. It's pretty cool. Stand here for a minute, he'll open up. Workout resume. Wow, what a view already, hey? Oh my goodness, I didn't know we took this much elevation already. Yeah, it's, well, it feels like it, I'm sweating like crazy. <laughs> well, it's hot. We just stopped for two seconds in a shady spot and I'm standing there, all of a sudden I'm like, ow, my toe. Ow, my other toe. And then my ankles, and I looked down, I was standing in a big anthill, and my feet are on fire now. I got stung a bunch by those suckers. It'll keep me moving, though. Yep. <laughs> oh, this is a pretty beautiful trail. <laughs> it's hot. The realities. Yeah, you need to do more of what your shirt says. Yeah, right? Yeah. I'm in. I wish the wind was like whooshing through the trail. That would be nice. Yeah, there's a lot of elevation too. Yeah. They've been climbing the whole time. Uh -huh. Okay. Ready? The Reef Bay Great House is the designated name for this residence, which oversaw the Par Force and the Reef Bay Estates. It represents the domestic aspect of the Great Estate, which oversaw the production in the Reef Bay Sugar Factory. This once magnificent structure was built in 1844. Even in its years of decay, you can still see the beauty that was once alive and vibrant. That's called a monkey no tr climb tree. Go figure. Weird. <laughs> The Reef Bay Sugar Factory is one of the best preserved ruins that we've visited on St. John's. The remnants of the boiling pots, sorting and engine rooms, and structure as a whole are in amazing shape. But this sweet factory didn't always produce that sticky nectar. Before the 18th century, it was a cattle and cotton plantation, which you can see from the surrounding walls and corrals. But as they say, the times they are a changing, and I guess there was more money in rum than beef. This mill was the last operating mill in St. John's producing sugar until 1907. I don't think I've never been this close to here in love. People have been adding their, hey, we were here, to structures for more than 2,000 years. The first people of the USVIs traveled the island seasonally in the same nomadic lifestyle that we kinda do today, seeking resources, sustenance, and building materials. 
These petroglyphs were like a road map and a circa 1900 AD text message to share information about the area and reach out to other travelers along the way. It's sort of the same way we hanu every place that we've been to. It's like a, hey guys, we're here. Awesome. All right, we got a long journey home. That was pretty cool. It was super neat. Yeah, it would have been awesome if the water was flowing, but it was pretty cool to see it still. Mm -hmm. oh, man, it's crazy. We haven't done as much physical stuff since I hurt my shoulders as normal. And part of it's just because everything we do is harder. But uh, even this hike we're doing today, it's been so challenging. I feel like my arms are just like 800 pounds hanging off the side of me and <laughs> yeah. they're uncomfortable for sure. And the last time we went on a hike, it was just after I'd injured them, a couple of weeks after I think. Yep. And uh, I slipped and I had to put my hand down to catch myself and jammed it. And I'm sure it did a lot of damage. So we've been really, really careful with that the last little while. But it has been hard. I haven't slept much in probably six weeks now since the injury. And um, I've gone through a lot of pain meds every night to try and sleep. It's been interesting. No, it's not. It's been interesting. It's been a, a challenge for sure. I've had lots of injuries in the past, but never had like both arms at once. It's been a completely different experience, that's for sure. A huge thank you to all of our patrons. Your support really does keep our channel going. If you're looking for some more behind the scenes Hanu fun, sign up and join the adventure on our Patreon site. Catch you later.